Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Harvest Easy Gum webinar, doing some advanced hands-on aesthetics. We are very excited to share our time together with you. Thank you for joining us. Sasha, Mary Beth, Carson, Shanna, you guys can go ahead and pop in. So for those of you who are with us, thank you again for your time. Uh, go ahead and say hello, drop your name in the uh, Q&A bubble so we know who you are and we'll say hello as, as you guys are getting settled in. Super glad to have you guys. Really excited to have uh, Shanna Grip, also known as VA Lady Toothmaker on Instagram, uh, showing some awesome casework that you do and uh, do a lot of advanced aesthetic hybrid cases, zirconia, composite, crown and bridge. And so really thank you for being here, Shanna. And then we also have Carson Klimek, master dental technician on uh, YouTube. You have quite the YouTube channel. I think you have probably one of the most popular dental specific YouTube channels I've seen. It's, it's really, really cool, really, really good content. And so thank you, Carson, for being with us. Super excited to have you as well. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about Easy Gum, but we're talking about it through the lens of advanced aesthetics, and we're really excited about that. But when you think of advanced aesthetics, there really is two ends of that spectrum. There is the, the end of the spectrum where it's all about, you know, just dialing in the whatever the, the gingiva color is for that patient, and then potentially if they want to wear that prosthetic for six to 12 months, you know you need a really reliable material that's really resilient, that's going to look aesthetic. And so Shanna Grip is going to share some of her uh, tips and tricks as a chair-side technician. And then Carson is going to be talking to us about achieving those advanced aesthetics, for sure, in a production environment. So how do we have you know five different technicians following an SOP uh, to achieve those aesthetics, for sure? I wanted to share just a couple of slides before we jump in. Let me share my screen just to kind of position uh, Easy Gum and what we're talking about as a product. So, gingiva aesthetics in 10 minutes flat. You know, if you're using one strip of material across an arch, it's really around 10 minutes. And, and Carson can give testimony to that. Um, Shanna, this is one of Shanna's cases, uh, an implant hybrid provisional. Um, I think she used like four or five different materials on this and it took her about 30 minutes plus or minus. Um, and so the, the time to apply traditional pink composite for a case like this would easily be an hour, uh, if not more. And so easy gum is dramatically reducing the application time at least by half, if not more than half, uh, her, application time on a case like this is, you know, 25 minutes plus or minus, mm -hmm. but also it's the time to train, you know, training up new technicians using advanced composite can take months. I even had someone jokingly tell me it could take years, but with easy gun, we believe that training could happen in days and weeks. And so that's really one of the, the hidden gems of easy gum is it's not only easy to use, but it's easy to train. Um, we're not going to talk about dentures tonight, but I do just want to reference the ease of use with monolithic denture try-ins. We know that there are a lot of advantages to digital dentures, and so labs are promoting digital dentures to their doctors, and printing a monolithic try-in is cost-effective, and it gets you to verify the bite and all those other wonderful things in the mouth. But then when you send this all-white try-in, there's some doctor friction, maybe some patient friction, like, where's the pink? How can I tell where the pink's going to be. And Easy Gum also solves this problem. So there's two big problems that it solves. One is dramatically reducing application time and training time with, with high aesthetic cases. But also if you have a, a monolithic denture try-in, you know, with a single strip of Easy Gum, it's five to seven minutes with one material to apply pink on the arch. Again, we're not diving into dentures tonight. But I do just want to reference both products and the position that Easy Gum has to help in both of these types of prosthetics. So tonight, we are here to talk about advanced pink aesthetics. We're going to go hands-on. So for those of you who 
got the um, uh, gift box. Cheers. Sorry for those of you who didn't, but if if you guys want to join the Pink Different Facebook group, we post the sign up to the webinar in that group first. So that group had early access to sign up for the webinar. So the first 20 people that signed up, we sent you guys a gift box with a model in it and some easy gum and a nice bottle of wine and a, and a pink different wine glass. So thank you for that. Um, so if, if you wanna be first in line at our next webinar, please join the pink different Facebook group. I'll have a QR code towards the end. So cheers everyone. Thanks for spending your evening with us or your early afternoon if you're in Pacific time. All right, so we'll zoom into Shanna. So Shanna, you are a chairside lab technician doing a lot of full arch cases. Maybe just tell us big picture, how many aesthetic hybrids are you doing, you know, a week per month using pink composite? Um, I'm using about, I have three to four prototypes a week that I'm using composite on. Amazing. And so, so in the time saving, you told me you've done like seven or eight so far. And yep. on average, how much time is using easy gum saving you on a per case basis? Of 20, 30 minutes. I mean, off of, I was probably spending between 40, 45 minutes to an hour, like shaping, molding, um, using, having to use various colors. Um, but yeah, I think this in particular, I think the, why I like it so much and why it cuts my time down so much is because it's the thickness of the consistency hmm. of the strip itself. So I'm not having to cut out pieces out of a syringe and then having to like apply it and then smush it out to the right thickness that's already laid out for me. Um, so I think that's what's really saving me the, the most amount of time um, in this. And also the consistency of the resin um, helps because it's not sticky and it molds quickly and wherever I put it, it stays. <laughs> so that's probably one of my favorite things about it. Amazing. Well, let's go hands on. So why don't you share yeah. your screen and let's jump in. And I'm gonna turn my video off and you know, Carson and Mary Beth and Sasha. All right. And All right. She, you were getting a lot of hearts from the audience. So there's, a lot, of, there's a lot of love out there. A lot of people. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I've, I've gotten so many messages and like so much love, you know, being able to do this. It's I'm honored because I know that some of you out there I've been watching for a long time. Um. I think the biggest thing for me is to kind of start out by what tools I use. Um, I think I get that asked a lot. How do I get it to look so aesthetic? And my three go-to tools um, are basically this, uh, the Harvest uh, contouring tool. And then I have a uh, rubber tip and then an Explorer. Um, I do also use um, disposable paintbrushes, which I get on Amazon. It helps me kind of paint on the modifiers. And then I will use micro brushes for texture if I need it. So I have a couple different sizes in those. But that's pretty much all I need to do anything. And with this, I've already bonded um, this piece. But today what I'm going to do is a kind of an in-between of the two of these, ethnic tissue um, is difficult. Um, you can have where it's a lot darker purple undertones, just a darker tissue all, all over, or you can have like the light pink and then you just have the hyperpigmentation, you know, in certain places, which you just go back in and characterize. So I'll do kind of like an in-between, but I'll show in my general workflow for every single hybrid that I ever do. And my go-to, and I'll probably be buying tons of this shade because it's my favorite shade. And this is the dark red plum. And every single one of them, I start out by, you know, placing it along the top and then pulling it down. I do digitally cut back on my tissue or reduce. If I don't, or if I need a little bit more, I'll do it by hand as well, but not too much. 
But that helps keep it to where there's like a window so you can have more depth in the resin. So it's not just one flat piece and then you're having to stack more on top, more on top, and then you have this really bulky piece of resin all the way across. So this kind of keeps it nice and thin. But my go-to is, and this seems to be the fastest. So I kind of think of it like makeup and contouring. So you're gonna put your darker shades down underneath first. And to get the depth, you want the shallow parts to be darker than the higher. If I get out of the picture, yell at me. You're good. There's just hearts. <laughs> Hearts are flying everywhere on the screen. So you have a lot of fans out there. So I just kind of paint and drag, paint and drag. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to be covering this up anyways. But this is my favorite color because honestly, when you lay the resin over and you polish this, it almost has like a bluish undertone, believe it or not. So. I'm gonna use my curing legs, it'll be faster. So like that, so now this is solid. Um, I could go in and do a, a few other colors if I was just gonna keep this nice and pink, but I'm gonna add, I had to mix. I'm gonna show it here, but I did, it's another brand, but it's a little bit of a thicker paste. It's more like a stain than it is a resin. So I used the dark red plum, but I also mixed in a black and this one is like a brown but to kind of get this kind of a bluish purple, almost kind of blackish colored. So I can actually lay this down also in between. And then I'll just go over it. And I'm not nice and neat about it. I just kind of get it on there. like Bob Ross. You are for sure Bob Ross. <laughs> Happy trees. Yeah, yeah. I could also layer in some like blues, but I'll drag it down. Seems a little taller. And Shannon, what was the, the brand you're using of the, the darker shade? Um, it's a, it's the Pala. Pala. And it's like a, what was it? A chocolate or it was a. Yeah, it's black and maroon, but the maroon is actually like a brown color. Okay. So Harvest is going to have to come out with like a dark chocolate. We'll come up with some. Yes. Maybe you can help us name it. Absolutely. All right. I'm gonna cure that. What curing light are you using for your bench top light? Just for um, I I have my handheld. It's a Velo. Okay. Yeah, super common for text to use a handheld light just to tack it in place. Yeah. You do your final cure. So from here, that part's done. I'm gonna use a dark reddish pink. Um. 
on this one. And a trick with this is when you take it out of the package, I don't care how warm it is in here, it's always cold. So I literally hold it and kind of like pinch it to kind of warm up the material before I, I peel one side of the plastic off. So, and I'll leave one side on and take one side off. When I line it up, I line it up so I'm even with the edge of the prosthetic. I don't want too much above because I want it to reach further down. And I'm just gonna press and just keep kind of pressing it. This is the part that makes it special because the more I press it in certain places, I know that if I'm in between and I'm pressing it, I'm getting, a, I'm going to get more translucency. Mm, so you can kind of, yeah. So it's a little bit warm now. It's not cold. So I know that when I peel this, I'm going to be able to carve it quickly. So just there you gonna go. peel. And then I go straight in with the papilla tool and just start pulling. And I assume you reuse that material that you're pulling off towards the distal of the arch if needed. Oh, always. Yeah. Yeah. I have like a little collection. And what's been your, uh, your working time that you have with it, the average easy gum case with the strips? Before I usually school? get about 20, 25. I mean, if I'm lucky 30, but I, I do have a lot of windows in here. So I usually get about 20, 25 minutes, which is more than enough. And you, you do have the harvest light bar with the, the warm mm -hmm. setting, which will actually then the working time. It's extremely helpful. Cause before I would do it in like in the dark. <laughs> Yeah, for our, for our viewers, if if you are sitting next to a desk with like window light or sunlight coming directly in, it will definitely shorten your working time. So I'm kind of using the edge of this to also kind of like rotate it into the interproximal. I'm not worried about making little lines on it because I can get that off later. How much of a cutback do you do in your design when um, you're preparing for an easy gum case? It depends. Sometimes I plan if I know what shade I'm going with. Not too much. Like a, a millimeter? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Not much. I mean, it's kind of like doing like micro layering, you know, with ceramics where you're going to make a window just so you're not, you kind of have where it's, back behind. So from here, I'm good with that. I go into using the silicone point and I will dip it in, sorry, in some bond just so it moves a little smoother. And then I press and pull down. And then just kind of like go to town with that. And we shared a, a link to the, the Amazon link for your fancy tools here to everyone in the audience. <laughs> I like this tool. Cause it kind of smooths it out too. Do you notice a difference with easy gum compared to traditional composites with uh, the oxygen inhibition layer? Yes. Um, have you noticed? When I, well, when I, it's not sticky at all. I don't have any issues with that. Um, when I cure it, it's cured. Yeah. This is a, 
a feature of EasyGum that we um, we included in the development, and it was to customize the composition of the composite to, let's say, virtually eliminate the oxygen inhibition layer. So you don't have to use uh, those gels and other things on top of the surface. Mm -hmm. right, the, so go ahead. My next thing I go into is with the Explorer. Yeah, you love and the I, Explorer. I do. It's just, it's like the perfect point to kind of get in between and remove any of the, the resin that gets stuck in approximately. But it also helps me contour that free gingiva. And so right now we have two different shades underneath the strip, yep. and this is a dark reddish pink strip, right? Yes. And what did you just put on there? Some of the other pieces just to add some body? Yeah, I got a little carried away. Oh. Yeah. He's a <laughs> So I also use like the back end of this and like roll it to make that tissue contour. Nice. Just like that. And it's a little exaggerated right now, but I can kind of like tap it into place, but it gives me a good idea of where to start. And just kind of like roll it around. A lot of other brands, I think I have everyone under the sun, but this one isn't sticky. Like when I touch it, some of the other ones, if I touch it and it gets too warm, it'll like melt <laughs> mm. and it moves around and it migrates. And I like this because it doesn't move wherever I put it, however I touch it, it doesn't budge, but it's soft enough to mold. So it's kind of unique. So I don't have to keep applying. I don't have to keep pushing it. I just kind of, I have a routine and it's predictable. Yeah, so I use the back of the Explorer to create some texture. And what I'm doing is like super extra. You don't have to do it. Well, you are a VA lady tooth maker. So true. I get told that all the time. Like you're so extra. I can't help it. I love the art behind it. So I like that. I do after I get everything on, I will go over it with the handpiece and just smooth out anything that's a little too high or kind of looks a little funny before I go into polish. And I try to get it all off the teeth. Will you, looks good. will you be adding any more modifiers to the top? I will. So this is basically my you know my resin layer i'll cure that i usually go back in with the pinks and you my go-to has been the light pink which is very translucent and i will go right here close to the margin i'm going to use both just to show 
move this one closer to the camera. I want everyone to see how translucent okay. this material is. Yeah. So, and I will trace right along here. I'll either use my point or my explorer, depending. And then I'm just going to pull it up. So it's going to fill in a little bit of those like extreme contours like I made and texture I made, but you're still going to be able to see through it. Drag it down. This one I do lay a little bit and then cure just to tack it. And I'll use the, this is the dark reddish pink. I like this one too. I'm going to do half and half so you can see the difference. You can see. The pink is super translucent. Someone asked a question, why is this yeah. resin not setting up faster under the intense light? We kind of talked about that. So given your current mm -hmm. lighting, so you're using the harvest light bar on what setting right now? Is this on the bright white setting? No, this is on warm. This is on warm. So yeah. um, we're not trying to cross promote a product, but there's just a legitimate benefit here. The harvest light bar has three color temperature settings and the warm setting has a it's a lower UV. So the extended working time is about 30 minutes for original pink and closer to 45 minutes for some of the darker shades. So um, you know, not being in direct UV sunlight or using the harvest light bar under the warm setting will get you extended working time of at least 25 to 30 minutes. So here you can you can see I'm trying to get it to focus. Nice. It's a little bit, it's bright on the screen, but in person, this is a little bit more opaque than the pink translucent. But I'm going to go back over this side. But if I was doing just like light pink shades, that would go, be my go-to. And then I will run the tip. Along the cervical or I will use the Explorer. And, or I will use, I don't know. I use a lot of different, like whatever works per case. So I keep them all handy. If I have to, I can use the paintbrush to get, a, get up underneath. Mm, okay. And it kind of creates that roll. Someone asked about um, primer before the color. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so there's a there's a bonding agent. We didn't show that uh, Easy Gum Bond, which is required in the IFU. It's got a a primer in it. And it's a, a light cured bonding agent. Any tips or tricks with the bonding agent using the bonding agent, Shanna? No, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Um, just evenly coat it across, cure it, and you're ready to roll. I do air, when, when this is printed, um, I do all my adjustments. I will air, air braid. Um, I do steam it, but I let it sit and dry. So that does help with some of the bonding, supposedly. 
You, but I'll let it sit for maybe 10, 15 minutes before I even touch it and start putting bonding or resin on it. Yeah, you for sure want a cured and dry surface before you start applying easy gum. Um, sometimes I'll kind of like show this too. When I'm doing like an ethnic tissue color, there is an opaque and I'll cut little triangles beforehand. And mm -hmm. sometimes I'll place these triangles either on the cervicals just to kind of have less translucency. Um, I can kind of show you. I'll do it on this one. The one that I posted on my Instagram, that's what I did with that one. So if I wanted to add just a little bit, I could. I'm getting artsy with it. But it's so easy. You just like press it in. Yeah, th there was a question earlier uh, before the webinar. Someone asked, can you mix the easy gum strips? And the answer is yeah. yes. You can go crazy if you want. Can do just about anything. I mean, so far it's going really, really fast because like before I would have to like take a little piece, tap it in, take a piece, tap it in, you know, it's or create that long noodle that never is even. It drives you crazy. So have you tried bonding easy gum to any other materials like zirconia or metal or any other polymers? No, not yet. Yeah, the the all-in-one bonding agent is, has got a primer in it that's indicated for um, ceramic-filled polymers, titanium, zirconia. Um, so it's it's very versatile. So a little more opacity if I wanted it. Not that you have to, but sometimes it's nice. All right, so, you, so you it got kind of five, fills in this five minutes. All right. So basically I'm almost done. So now I'm going to go in and just characterize. I use a little micro brush and I'm going to dip it into the mix I made. And just start tapping. Just tap it out. There's your Bob Ross quote. Just tap it out. <laughs> Happy little trees. That's it. Happy little veins. Yeah, happy little veins. I mean, and you can go in and like, you know, put little, you know, blue lines and squiggly lines, or you can put red ones. But I mean, this is, yeah. I will use the, I will say though, if you use the paste or any kind of stain, you're going to have to seal it because when you go to polish, you'll polish it off. It, uh, talk about polishing and why you prefer mm -hmm. polishing with easy gum. I, it, this polishes extremely well and it's so beautiful i feel like i even get more translucency and more of a lifelike look when i polish and i polish with a just a polishing compound for uh, normal dentures denture. acrylic yeah, yeah anything i have a couple of them in there that it, they're all kind of equally the same but i use a soft rag wheel on the lathe and i get the absolute best polish i'm now kind of experimenting with the harvest the speed polish. Nice. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to play with that because I've been told it's supposedly, you know, we can use it on this as well um, and see how that turns out. But so far I've been using the lathe, but if I can use it at the bench, it's even better. Yeah. The harvest speed polish was reformulated to be an all in one. It's good for zirconia metals, polymer composites. Love to get your, uh, your feedback on that. Yeah. And I like using the brush too, because it gives you just like a little bit of a look of a texture. Because the hyperpigmentation kind of does have a texture to it. It's like a thicker tissue. But I try to keep it on this like top one third and let it creep down a little bit. So Shane, if I were to bring you a highly creative, let's say someone that was really good at doing nails, they were creative, mm -hmm. they had tactile skills, they were artistic, no dental experience. How long do you think it would take you to train them doing pink composite work for you? Probably like an hour or two. I mean, <laughs> it would it would be so easy. You really think so? Like, oh yeah. If you showed some pictures of 
like different types of tissue and you had to mimic it. And I think, yeah, you'd have to have some idea of what, you know, contouring in your brain, you know, what it really looks like, what it's meant for. Um, they would, yeah, need I think some, so. they would need some guidance and some QC, but you think within like a couple of weeks, they would be productive and useful in your lab. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. <clears throat> As opposed to traditional composites, what would, what would you say like the, the difficulty level is or how, how much easier is it to use and train easy gum? I think that traditionally it would take some experience just because you would need to know how much you would need and where to place it and how to place it and how to kind of smooth it out because you're not getting something in a uniform you know, thickness. So I, I think there is a learning curve with that. And a lot of people struggle with getting it to look even because you'll, it'll look bumpy or it'll look uneven. And I think that's where it kind of discourages people like, well, I, you know, I don't want to, I want it to look more natural. And that's where the easy gum kind of comes into play where it really does make it easy to make it look natural. Um, because you don't have to worry about all of those extra little steps it's already done for you. You know, when I first got my hands on it, I was a little bit skeptical, like, oh, it's one of those things that kind of just dumbs it up. I was wrong. I will admit I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong because it, it doesn't, it's not, it's, this is definitely something that makes my workflow so much faster. And, and, and you sacrificed your aesthetic demands at all by using no it. not at all i mean i could go like forever i know it's a little bit blotchy on the screen but in person i'll have to take some pictures and post them um but in person i mean it's just like it's exactly what i want this is amazing <clears throat> yeah so i mean this is pretty much it and then i will either take this in the other room and um i may smooth it out just a little bit with a handpiece and I just use a, um, oh my gosh, the little, like a, the denture, um, what I call them the denture puffs. <laughs> 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 I use the denture puffs um, just to kind of like knock down, you know, a lot of the bumps and sure. unevenness that I have when I was doing like the tapping. Right. Um, then I'll take it in and polish it under the, the lathe and it comes out super glassy. Um, this one is polished. This is no glaze on it. Hold that closer. So this has no glaze on it? No. I put a little bit on the teeth, but I did not touch the tissue. Wow. I mean, that's how, that, it's beautiful. Like I didn't, ha I don't really like glaze because it tastes terrible and it just comes off later. And a highly polished smooth surface is going to resist bacteria and plaque adhesion a lot better. Yeah. Tons. But I did, um, I, if I do use glaze, I will paint it on very lightly just to seal this margin. Sorry, right here. Mm. And when I do paint it, I will blow some air to even it out and then cure it. So it's not super chunky or it gets settled into these embrasures, but that's it. Cause I well, can still yeah. see some texture in the teeth. This, but, yeah. Yeah. Hold that up close so we can get a good look at it after you're done curing it. And then we'll transition to cars. Mm -hmm. Let's see. The, yeah. the, and the, the shade might be slightly off cause you're on the warm light setting. Yeah. Okay. I can turn. Oh, there you go. That makes a difference. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful work. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Yay. Guys, if you have questions for Shanna, keep putting them in the Q&A and we're going to transition now to Karsten. So Karsten, you know, comes from a, a rich history of advanced aesthetics, ceramics, full mouth cases, you know, implant cases and, and ceramic cases. And, but yet Karsten spent many, many years in production labs that have high aesthetic demand. So Carson, I'm excited to hear your perspective on easy gum and using it and achieving aesthetics 
in a production environment. So tell us, <clears throat> yeah, just tell us your story and uh, how you plan to use this in your lab. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Rob. It's my second webinar. We did the first one to do the easy appliance. And that was a lot of fun. We did it with Jimmy Stiegel. Jimmy Stiegel did it on a on a denture um, chainer. That was amazing. That oh, is thank really, you. It's really hard to follow. <laughs> so it's really difficult to follow, but, but it's amazing work. You do amazing work. So I... I spent most of my career in large production labs where the consistency is the most um, critical part of all the production. Because if you work in a small lab like, like Shanna and you're the only person there, then your consistency is obviously there because you're only one person. But in a large lab, maybe four or five people are working on all on four cases or on or applying pink. So how do you create the consistency there to make it an even outcome in the whole production line? So um, I'm going to show you this. I'm big on SOPs, writing SOPs and making it simple for technician. I, I feel as a manager or as a leader, your job is not it's not to make it difficult for technician and show off how good you are in front of everybody. It's more, how do you implement processes and standards into a lab that is easy to follow and then people have a consistent outcome? That's the most important thing, to my opinion, in a, in a large lab. If you're in a, in a small lab, it's a complete different story. So... Um, when I design these cases, you know those, I design everything in ExoCAD and I also do a digital cutback like Shanna. I have the settings at 1.5 millimeter reduction. And when I do the reduction at the T's, I'm going to go as close to the teeth as possible. Like I set it to 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeter away from the T's so that I don't have this little line around the T's. If I have it, I can grind it away really, really easily. Um, then I'm going to grind on it a little bit when it comes out of milling or printing. And then I'm going to sand blast it a little bit. And I'm going to sand blast it with aluminum oxide. And there are different theories about sand blasting, especially sand blasting zirconia or PMMA. I sand blast in a 15 degree angle and about 10 millimeters away. So when you write SOPs for large labs, there shouldn't be any possibility for guessing. Everything needs to be right there. So nobody can assume the next step or nobody can guess or make up their own production workflow because everything needs to be standard, standardized. And that's what I'm going to show you. So all the settings are there, all the measurements are there. So it's 1.5 millimeter ginger oil reduction and 0.2 millimeters away from the margin. A 15 degree angle and sand blasting 10 millimeters away, aluminum oxide. And then I'm going to apply the easy gum bond on this. And I'm going to apply it with a micro brush really easily. And then I'm going to cure it for 90 seconds. If I cure it more, it cures too much and then the inhibition layer is going to disappear and it doesn't um, bond too much anymore when i design this i'm going to design like like shanna i'm designing little roots here where i can apply my my darker area if i go if I go closer you can see the, the the root area and in between where i have the darker area i also apply a finish line here where the ginger oil is actually finishing. So I, um, that makes it easier later on when you grind slowly on there, you have a really nice finishing line between PMMA and um, the pink composite. That makes it looks better and it's easier for the technician to clean up. In the last webinar, I also showed what I'm plugging in here. I don't wanna have anything 
come into the multi-unit interfaces. So I I found those ones here from Digital Arches. These are scan flags for Digital Arches, but I use those to block off the multi-unit interfaces so none of the composite of the EDGAM goes into the multi-unit interface. So what I'm going to use today are different composites. And I always tell technician to lay everything out in the order what to use. So on this side, I have my light composites, which is root, pink translucent, and light pink. In the middle, I have the dark composites, which is um, dark red plum and reddish pink. And here are some optional ones, which is red pink and night blue. These are optional. I might not use them today, but I have them here anyway. So when, when I'm going to start with this, I have also already the easy bond on there. What I'm going to start with is a dark reddish pink. I like this a lot because it it looks pretty, pretty, pretty neat. And what I'm going to do, I don't do, I'm going to do the whole arch. I'm going to do just a little bit here. So I'm going to apply it at the border here where my junction is between the PMMA and the area where I'm going to apply this. So it's a little bit dark and that that looks later on pretty nice. So I'm going to go one flow forward and one flow backwards. So that looks pretty good. After this, I'm going to use the dark red plum that Shana was using. And it looks also really nice. And I'm going to apply it in a certain matter. So when you, when you look at the teeth here, you have to um, um, imagine that you're going to put the light pink later on as the light, the, the free margin goes over here. So you don't want to put the red pink all the way up here because otherwise it's going to look like the patient has some bleeding gums or so. So you want to, you want to stay like, like, like the, the light pink is about a millimeter thick. So you want to stay like a millimeter below this. So I'm going to put this one in here. See if I can see this. So stay here, and then I can always bring it a little bit up. Okay. I'm going to use a brush here, it's like a regular ceramic brush. And with this one, I'm going to bring it slightly up and create kind of a triangle. So because the root is going in a, in a triangle, so I'm mixing the dark with the, so I'm mixing the red dark with the reddish pink. So I'm mixing it together. So don't, don't bring it all the way up, stay like a millimeter below there. And I think, I mean, Shana, she did a, she did a, Fantastic job. And it's it's always a different scenario when you go into a production lab and when you go into a small lab. When I first started my career, in, I was in Germany. I, I was working in a small dentist office as well. And um, I, I assume Dana, um, Shana, she needs to do the model work herself. She needs to do... Um, the zirconia and everything, the glazing herself. In a production lab, it's completely different. In a production lab, you have different stations where everybody is doing only one step. So the training in a production lab can be easier. And finding technicians like Shana um, these days is almost, it's almost impossible. I mean, if you have a well-rounded technician like, like her, it's, it's like gold. So I'm gonna create a little triangle here around the T's to make it look like a little bit darker between the roots. Then 
I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to light fuse this a little bit. And don't, don't look in the light. Probably not healthy for you. So I'm going to go around here one time, and I'm going to go back one time. Okay, so that should be oops, that should be good now. Let me see, yeah. So now I'm going to take the strips from Harvest Dental, the Easy Gum strips, and unlike unlike um, Shana, I just take it off. I just take it off the the whole strip, and I am going to apply it all the way here. So when I'm going to apply it, I'm going to just press it on really, really carefully. I don't want to press it too much, but I don't want to press it so that it falls off. Carson, in your experience, what have you found the working time to be in your lighting conditions? For well, the working time in this lighting conditions, it's about mm, 10 minutes. So I'm using the light bar as well on the low settings. And then, so what I also use, so let me cover this a little bit here. What I also use is like model LC, and that's for an extent. I put this on here. And I also use um, silicone tip here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this to press it into mm -hmm. the area to to start modeling. And when you when you use it, it it's actually really really nice. Can you hold that closer to the camera so people can? Yeah, it's a really good shot. And you're gonna thin it out. So go go in here, and you just thin it out a little bit. The model LC or the liquid you can use whatever liquid, but model LC I found that works really really well. Make it makes it makes it look really really good. Then I'm gonna bend it around, and now now these little plugs they come in handy because nothing goes in between here. Nothing goes into the multi unit interfaces. Press it down with your fingers a little bit. So thin it out, and then you can also thin it out towards the teeth because we're going to use the Harvest Dental tool later on to carve it away. So what I did, let me let me cover this a little bit. What what I did here with the Harvest Dental tool when I first used it, I wasn't really I wasn't really a fan of it. So what I did is I actually modified it a little bit and I carved it. Mm -hmm. I made it like a like a sharp edge here. And that makes it much, much easier for me at least to, to carve away the composite, the composite strips. So here I can then let me, let me focus on the camera. I can carve it away really, really easily. And then what I do later on, I'm going to bring it back in with a silicone tool. So that makes it much easier for me. I heard different opinions from, from, from different technicians on this tool. I mean, Shanna likes it when it's round. I, I didn't have much experience or good experience with it. I think it's tearing it too much. And I like to carve it away instead of tearing it. And then I can go ahead oops, with the with the silicone tip, I can go ahead and bring it back in here and start modeling the area. So what I do, I'm gonna just 
bring it in here because I have this margin here and later on I can grind it away. So I don't I don't really spend much time on on cleaning this up. I'm going to just light cure it later on and then grind this away because I, I designed this margin here and it gives me a beautiful finish line. So now start to modeling this one here. And this one takes a little bit of practice. So you have to understand um, how the gums are actually looking and how the seniors of the gums are actually looking but that's an easy training day i mean you you can train this in a day that's actually a funny story so I, I was working in a lab and when i was first introduced to easy gum there, there was a there was a i i wouldn't call him technician i would call him mm, somebody who worked there and he was hired and he was filling up before he was filling up vending machines. So I, I trained him in this easy gum and he was really good at it after the second try of doing this. So, so a guy who was filling up vending machine was layering pink composite, which usually takes years to learn probably on the second try and that was that was pretty pretty good um he might he might be really talented maybe that was it um or easy gum is just that easy or you're just an awesome teacher <laughs> uh, i i i don't think it has to do with it because it, if you if you are um creating clear instructions Right, and you have a talented technician that wants to learn, then the world is the world is open, right? And everything is possible. What do you think, Rob? I think so too. We we hear over and over the ease of use and speed of training is just really good. Find yeah, the someone... speed of, the speed of the speed of training in a production lab is the most important. Thing because the measurements in the production labs are completely different. So, um, or the motivation, like Shana is working at a at a smaller lab, and her motivation, and, and she told me this, and correct me if I'm wrong, Shana, but but um, her motivation is is to go home, <laughs> right? Yeah, she just wants to go home at, at the end of the day, and um, because she's um, she's working all day long making like four full ash cases a day. And at the end of the day, she, she says, yeah, I'm, I'm done. So, but in a production lab, it's a completely different, different environment. Um, you have un unit cost calculation. You got um, employees, salaries or hourly rates, and you have to, you have to manage these things differently because time is money in a production lab, right? So it's, it's not so much about the aesthetic. Yeah, it needs to look good, but it needs to look consistently good. So you, you cannot have one day beautiful all on four cases leaving the lab. And then the other day, they don't look so good anymore. So it needs to be, it needs to look consistent every day. And like Shana, she has natural consistency because she's only one person in the lab. But but if you're working with different technicians, then it becomes a problem. Or if you're working even with trainees. So then I'm gonna let me cover this. Then I'm gonna use light pink, and I'm also moving this one around, and I'm framing. Basically, I'm following the outline here. A and the light pink is probably one of my favorite materials. And this is a millimeter I was talking about before. So you wanna you wanna have this a millimeter thick. And if you make the the red, the red plum too thick and too high into the interproximal areas, into the papilla, 
and it looks like the patient has bleeding gums, and uh, we want to avoid that. So I'm, I'm carefully moving this around here, around the teeth, and basically framing it. So, in a, and if you hire a technician, you always want to make sure these people are good with their hands. Um, I I usually hire people that like to paint and have a paint a painting background or or people that have an artistic hobby. These are really, really good people to hire. And then you can use the little tool to smooth it out again. So like like Shanna did it really, really nicely. Smooth it out into the area here, into the root. And then also you can also take this tool. This one, this one is a more sharper tool. You can go around here and sharpen the areas around here to redefine the whole area. Go around here. So I, I stopped. Um, I wanted to explain the the difference of the sinus. So let's say if you have a sinus of the um, canine, of the lateral, or of the um, central. So the sinus of the of the central. If you look at the long axis here of the tooth, the sinus is a little bit towards the distal. So let's say if this is my long axis, I want to have my highest point more to the distal of the long axis. On the lateral, the long axis and the sinus are in the same position. And on the central, it's the same thing. The sinus is a little bit towards the distal. And if you teach this to a technician, then one day it makes sense. You, you can draw it to them and you can show them little 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 diagrams on how, how this works and people tend to understand it. It's really, really easy. So then I'm gonna thin it out a little bit here. Carson, given the this material and process you're doing, how many minutes per arch would you say this would take you on average? Um it shouldn't it shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. I'm I'm not a faster technician. I mean, Shana, she was really fast. So then, then I'm going to use a little bit of root, and I'm going to just put like a like a drop of root here. And the root, I I really like this. It gives it a nice little little kick of where the root is. Now I'm just spreading it out. It has this pinkish, orangey look to it. it. Makes it really, really natural looking. So and I'm, I'm spreading it out with the brush here. So it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the good part because natural pink is not is not perfect. So it, it, it's actually no no right or wrong on pink, right? You just have to follow certain certain standards. So then I'm gonna fine tune this a little bit here with the tool. Make sure I have nothing on the teeth. Follow the sinus of the the arch, and that would be it already. So I would put it in a in a curing box for probably. Two, three minutes, probably three minutes, and then that's it. I'm I'm not polishing it. I'm using um, nano vanish for this one. And after this, it's done. Carson, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Sasha, Mary Beth, Shanna, why don't you guys go ahead and come back on? And I just wanted to show a few slides, and then we'll go into Q&A. Because I, I think this will maybe even answer some of the questions. But I just wanted to make mention of some of the product details. 
So Easycom, a um, couple, of, couple of different configurations. Uh, you can buy uh, from any of your, your favorite dealers or also on harvestdental.com. Easycom trial kit, 179. It comes with the papilla tool, four strips, and the bonding agent. Um, the strips come in, they're four packs, four strip per pack. On average, you can get about one, one arch per strip. Um, and then that comes with six different shades, original pink, dark reddish pink, light reddish pink, light pink. And then we have two opaque shades that are higher in opacity to mask out um, the white. These are uh, pretty popular with uh, denture trines, trying to mask out the white quickly and get pink on there quickly. Um, we have a, a system of pink modifiers in three gram syringes and intense modifiers in one gram syringes. And the pink modifiers match the strips. Uh, the color palette matches the strips. And then the intense modifiers, uh, the root, dark red plum, bright red, night blue, and dark violet. You can see all those here. And then we have the bond and the papilla tool and then the master kit. So the master kit is both what Shanna and Karsten were working with. This comes with all six strip shades, all six pink modifiers, all five intense modifiers. And the, the list price of the master kit is $8.99. That is 20% off. If you were going to buy all these components separately, uh, go ahead and buy the master kit. And in that price is baked in a 20% off offering. But for today, for the webinar, just for the people who registered and attended as a thank you to you, uh, if you buy a master kit before end of day Friday, then you're going to get five extra Easy Gum four packs of original pink. It's a $300 value free as a promo. So you, you can buy this through your, your favorite dealer and just show us your proof of purchase and we'll ship you the free goods. And so just wanted to make mention of the webinar promo. Again, this is exclusive only if you registered for the webinar. So uh, if if you know anyone, uh, this this deal is exclusive to you, only for you, because we're so grateful that you came and spent time with us. Also, there's a lot of learning on the Easy Gum uh, Pink Different Facebook group. You can scan this QR code, join the group. In that group, we have videos and photos from Shanna, from Karsten, from other technicians. Uh, this is a Facebook group that we'll use to celebrate pink aesthetics. And there will be other materials being used in this group besides Easy Gum, um, but it's of course uh, got a lot of Easy Gum content in there. So just wanted to make mention of that before we get into the Q and A and kind of wrap things up. So thank you, Karsten. Thank you, Shanna. Shanna, I've never seen so many hearts come through in a webinar. <laughs> I did for you. So you you definitely have a lot of uh, a lot of admirers out there. Um. So a couple of questions that came in. Um, what uh, will that affect the tissue fit when you add material on the underside? So I had a question. The when you add material underneath the strip, I'm wondering if they're asking about bond. I mean, the the, the easy gum will will bond. You can mix strips and they'll bond together uh, wonderfully. Um, I think they like, mean like, when you wrap around to the tissue part of the the hybrid. Oh yeah, I mean that, yeah. that you add too much material in the intaglio surface of the hybrid. Um, you definitely want to be mindful of that. I think that's why Carson designs his finish line there. So in the design, you know where the junction of the composite is going to stop, and the rest of the hybrid will continue. Is that correct, Carson? Yeah, usually. When I'm done, I would put it on the model and, and check the fit one more time. Nice. And then what I'm going to do is um, I usually have a soft tissue there and I put a little bit of Vaseline on top of the soft tissue then press it down so the easy gum doesn't stick to it. And then I, I lift it up, clean it up a little bit. So I don't have too much um, tissue pressure there. But good question. It's a great question. Um, are either of you using the auto flash for curing? No, not yet. Uh, we had a question about <laughs> using the auto I want flash. it. <laughs> we had a question coming. If using the auto flash with gas, what cure times would be between applications and final cure? Um, if you go to harvestdental.com and go to the easy gum page, we have the IFU in there. The IFU we created 
uh, lists and diagrams out the wavelength intensity and the time needed to cure. So you would need to confirm with your, you know, light cure manufacturer, what's the wavelength and then what time it's about a minute and a half to two minutes is what we're hearing technicians. Shanna, how, how much time are you curing your arch in? Um, everything I, all the layers are about 90 seconds, but I do like a final cure in the big cure box for, I don't know, maybe three, between three and five minutes. Okay. It goes in there. I mean, I've never had any issues where a lot of other resins, I, I just don't feel like I get a good cure. Um, this one, I have not had any issues. And I, again, this is why I go to this particular resin is because it's just faster. Like, I just feel like it's cured, you know, when it's cured, because it doesn't have that film across it. it doesn't have that tackiness to it. And when I go to polish it, you can tell too, because it doesn't get dull because if you don't have cure, cured resin, it gets dull when you polish it. So, you know, it's cured when it's getting that really, really shiny look to it as well. So I've never really had any issues curing. If anything, it cures better and faster than anything I've used. Amazing. We, we had a question. Do the strips come in a longer length? Uh, currently, they do not. Um, the, the length that we currently have, it's sufficient for one full arch. Shanna or Carson, have you ever had a case where you couldn't use one strip for an arch? No. Close. Close. I had a strip, but I like I have to like press it and then like pull it back. <laughs> but it, oh. it, it would reach. I think it's a perfect, it's a perfect length for a full arch case and when you carve back the ginger roll there's always excess material and you can take it and you can then press it at the last molar that's what i usually do awesome well guys um any other questions in the audience please type those in sasha any any final words or comments did we leave anything out no just uh first off so appreciate everybody taking the time to join us tonight. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, it was our ambition to honor your time and, and hopefully, hopefully we've done that. Uh, Shannon and Karsten, um, thank you so much. Excellent job. Um, Rob and B great job putting this together. Um, and again, this was a project that was, uh, was, uh, I would say a highlight of, of my, of my career um developing a product that really is rooted in a in a in a key value for us at harvest which is simplicity and you know simplicity is is not easy it's actually very hard right and it it it's a focus on the essential simplicity is around creating clarity by you know, stripping away right unnecessary complexity um and you know product design to us really should feel intentional for the user right we create for you not for us and um you know the product's detail how it feels how it functions um you know really should inspire a sense of experience that is non-conventional yet uh more meaningful and so uh what what you've hopefully heard today is a manifestation of 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 that value system right uh and and we again just thank you again for taking the time and and um uh we we thank you so much awesome thanks you guys so much shanna carson any any final comments I just, I feel honored to be able to share this. I mean, it's a product that I picked up and I had suspicions about and I was, I was wrong. <laughs> I love it. And then the only reason I'm here doing this is because I do stand behind it and I, I love doing or using this product for the hybrids and it's making my life easier. So I appreciate everything in the time and yeah, getting to share. Awesome. Awesome. I think. I think that it's an it's an amazing um, product, and when um, when I first used it for the first time, I was really impressed by it because it it just looks good by using the strip alone. You don't 
you can put you can put all the modifiers on there, but it just looks good just with the strip. And that's the amazing stem. That's the amazing thing about it. Mm-hmm. So it's so easy to teach. It's so easy to use. It's I guess that's why they call it easy gum, right? There is some intentionality in the name for sure. For sure. Mary Beth, any um, I know you're gonna be sending out an email. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, we'll have this webinar recorded. You'll be following up with email. Anything you want to add that I may have missed? No, not at all. I think um, I think that the the tone and the tenor of this of this webinar has been so good. Like I picked I picked a lot up on our last one. I picked up even more on this one. So every day you learn something new about this product, and it could be just like Shanna's like the little triangle. Right. I mean, who knew? So, (laughs) so I think that, you know, just the, the learning opportunities um, are huge with this product and yeah, I'll be sending out an email. We'll have a link to resources and um, how to purchase with us or with our, with your favorite dealer, everything will be in the email and ready to go. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, we'll wind it down, but we'll take a have a few more questions. Someone asked, would I need to put a strip on the lingual? Do you guys ever put pink composite on the lingual? No, never. Not in not in prototypes. I mean, if it were something asked by a doctor, I would, but generally I don't. Um, I put pink on the linguals on my zirconia, but not on prototypes. Awesome. <clears throat> um, if someone asked about mixing easy gum with other types of composite, if they wanted to use a different type of composite and then mixing it with easy gum or like using other systems, Sasha, I, I assume at a base level, they would be compatible, but you know, we haven't done our, our own testing for that. Any insights on that mixing and matching other composites with easy gum? Yeah. Just from a regulatory standpoint, obviously, you know, we have a, we have an IFU and, and, and that's what we recommend, but you know, easy gum is a true composite. The characterization, the fillers in easy gum, that's really the uh, the innovation. Um, and so when when the reason why it does have a kind of a dry touch and it does have a a malleable element to it, um, you know, versus the other pink composites, uh, as as Shanna described, you know, can almost like almost feel melty. Um, that that would be the only I think level of in, incompatibility where where I would you know that I would caution is there's different fillers um, and so you're merging you know different probably different you know light curing you know dynamics and so um, but uh, yeah that, that's how I would answer that question. Technicians will be technicians, but our I <laughs> the bonding agent, the strips, and the modifiers are all in a system for sure. Well. I think that's about it. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. We'll be Thank sending you. post this to our Harvest YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, have an awesome evening. Thank you, Carson, Shanna, Mary Beth, Sasha, and for everyone joining us. Night, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Good night. Night.